So this actually relates to, it's related to what we're talking about is these ecosystems. So an ecosystem is made up of different levels of wealth. And mostly in this small thing in the corner here, like parts and products, this is mostly what we're talking about when we talk about money. And it's actually, in fact, a source of why we're doing so badly at collective intelligence. Because tradable wealth, um, so if you think about a cow, you can say the tradable wealth would be the parts and products of the cow. So that might be the milk of the cow, or it might be the meat of the cow. Um, and if you sell the meat of the cow, you no longer have cow, right? So most of our monetary systems are looking at this. So we think about uh, a mountain, if you were trying to sell the mountain as quarry, there's a quarry, there's forest that you could cut down, you no longer have mountain when you sell the parts and products. And our current system, our dashboard, GDP, for example, only shows that. And as you can see, it's the smallest part. And then, so when I was talking before about what would our dashboard, if I wanted to know the health of my community that I'm living in, what other areas of wealth might be I want to do? Um, and so I could go through each one of these things just quickly, and then we could talk a little bit about what, how we would measure a community. So um, properties of the system. So again, I'm going to go back to the cow because we all understand a cow. Hopefully we understand cow. Uh, property of the cow would be, this is a grass-fed cow, um, or this is a breed of cow, it's a, you know, a Holstein cow, it's a beef cow or a milk cow. Um, you can't change that about the cow. I mean, you could change the grass-fed part, but it's a property. It doesn't have a number that goes up and down. It's kind of like a label. Did we get Michelle yet? I'm happy to turn over as soon as he shows up. Um, and, but I can't look at my screen because then you won't see what I want you to see. Yeah. Okay, let me know. Yeah, let I'm, me know. Something. I'm monitoring for him. Okay, no good. Way. Yeah, interrupt for me. All right, cool. So that's something that is a property of the cow, and it's not a tradable property of the cow, grass-fed, but it does influence the tradable wealth. So if it was the person was me, I was trying to sell my blood, my blood would be type O positive. That might have a different tradable value than, you know, B or AB blood, right? So, but I can't really change it. It's just a label. Um, then we have, and that talks about, um, you know, different areas. So the performance is rankable wealth. So this cow might produce more milk than any other cow in the county. And that's her rank. And it talks about her vitality vis-a-vis -vis other people. And we understand that from sports as well. So if you talk about an Olympic athlete, they're, they've got an Olympic gold medal and it only represents their vitality at a very specific point in time on a very specific track against other specific people. And again, you can't trade it. You could give me your Olympic medal, but it would not make me as vital as you are. That's your rank. It's not my rank, even if you give me the medal. And so that's the performance, the vitality and the performance of systems. Um, and, and, um, and then, you know, so we have that. In some ways, we have that about our cities. We might say, okay, this city has the highest per capita, this or that or the other thing. And that would be the performance of systems. Again, if we're saying GDP, then we're still only measuring the rank of it in terms of the tradable wealth. But we've also seen these happiness factors, um, gender equality factors. Those are things that we rank um, when we're talking about our communities. And they rec represent some form of vitality. Obviously, um, gender equality, GDP, and happiness are all very different forms of vitality. Um, the relationship between systems talks about the interconnectivity and the identity of those systems. So the cow might be very beloved by her, you know, the, the little girl who raised her. Um, she might be part of a farm where, uh, you know, when she treads on the ground and leaves her manure, that also causes the earth to be more rich because she has a relationship with the earth and the farm and the things that grow on that farm. Um, so those are, and those are the kinds of things that kind of 
we 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 neglect them very very deeply. So when I was talking about the mountain, we're not talking about okay the snow that lands on the mountain and then runs off all year round provides water all year round. And if you cut down the mountain, then you're going to change the entire relationship of everything around the mountain. Um, and then again, if we're talking about our communities, we have a capital city, we have cities that provide the farming, you know, the food production to the city. So those things are all very interrelated. And that's one of the things that we've done a very poor job of measuring. And as a re result, when we look at ourselves inside of this pandemic, we're not clear what these interrelationships are. Um, we do kind of know that what we're doing right now will cause mental health crises in some places, closing people up for long periods of time, not letting them interact. We know that's going to cause a mental health crisis, but we don't really look at it. We don't know how to measure that well. And then we also know that unemployment and these other things are going to cause financial uh, collapses or crises or something somewhere, also adding to this mental health crisis. So there's this huge interrelationship that we're very bad at measuring. And so right now, all the decision making that's being made about the pandemic is inside of let's not have our health system collapse, because we also know if our hospitals collapse, that's another whole interrelatedness of things. But we have a very limited capability to compare what will be the financial implications versus what will be the implications of the hospital system uh, collapsing. We just don't know even how to look at that. Those are measures that have to do with the nameable wealth, the relationship between systems that we don't have. I don't think we have almost any model to look at. And you could say in some ways that's a result of our myopic, myopic looking only at money as wealth, whereas all the other forms of wealth, we know them, but we don't hear them or have good um, modeling systems for that. And then finally, the last one is evolutionary capability of the systems. So that's the possible wealth. And then some things evolve quickly and some things evolve slowly and some things we can modify. So as a human being, for the cow might be a little harder to modify, but as a human being, I can put in, um, I can put in hearing and glasses, you know, so I can see better and hear better than the capacity that I had before. And then for cities, it's quite obvious. For a city, we can evolve all kinds of things. We can put in different kinds of sewage systems, electricity systems, 5G, um, which may be better or worse than 4G for a variety of reasons. But we can evolve the system itself and create even more or even less as we evolve the system. So that's a framework uh, for thinking about the question that I just asked about what would a dashboard look like? What are some of the things we want to know about the societies that we live in? And then again, as, as we said, like in the Cosmo part, the relationships, what are the relationships we want to know? And again, I know that's a very, very big question for people, but it is something that we can all start speculating about together. And I'd love for you to hear you speculate about that. Who wants to start speculating? Um, well, can I do a comment? Of course. Oh, uh, I know this model since six years ago on a website, Metacurrency, is it right? Metacurrency? Yes, that's correct. This is Arthur Brock's Metacurrency okay. uh, model, yeah. correct. Well, and I appreciate very much the Olo chain, and uh, and I would like with my with my with my collaborators to to experiment it in the next in the next weeks. Where, but uh, the theoretical model, that kind of model, I think it's quite traditional for two features as well for, for example one is this evolutionary idea i prefer 
in an active approach, which is em embodied in, in knowledge and uh, embodied, embedded. And uh, it's, so it's a bit different, not a representational model of evolution. And the second most important one is that there is no separation between uh, a market, market-based economy and the evolutionary more, I don't know if the term is correct, uh, spiritual or wealth in in sense of well-being um, intended as level as we can intend beyond beyond money to say. Uh, I think that there is a misinterpretation about society, individuals, and markets because we have usually we share an idea of market that comes from a traditional um, economy from mainstream eco economics and alternative ideas are built on that i mean against that uh, against means that we build an alternative economy with values that are against the bad one we are looking at uh, in, in empirically, uh, we have. I am. I am a sociologist, and in economic sociology, uh, uh, many sociologists share this kind of view. Many social critics, many uh, many many developers in the field of blockchain for social good, in the common in the commoning in the commoning move, movement as well. I think this is a very limited view, a separate view. If this is the case, I, I'm not sure because. We don't look at the market as it is in real life. Market is relational. Relations are not only when we decide that we have a good relation in love or in our families or our colleagues, and money is a word of, of sin. Market is relational as well. And from this point of view, there is no difference or an evolution from a market system to another one. I mean, we, we use markets and we are used by markets. Money is, money is not only a universal, a universal tool of evaluation of goods and services. It's also manipulated by people and people attribute, attribute meanings to money. And one dollar is not one dollar because it depends if you are a child, if you are a mother, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a, a stealer. I mean, one dollar is not one dollar. This comes from, from at least from my sociological understanding, especially after the studies made by Viviana Zelizer. I like her very much. And there is a book, I'm sorry, I'm now, I don't remember economic lives m more or less this this is not a critique i mean i don't want to be i think that this kind of energy we put in this field and specifically in this in these days in these weeks with this virus that we understand a lot about ourselves and others i agree a lot uh, about meta currency because meta currencies is one of the few uh, groups recognizing the importance of life skills and uh, or our inner energies and not only of the technological the technological stuff so i appreciate very much but uh, a critique is about this this economic model and that's it i mean you you can get a look to Viviana Zelizer works and maybe it's really interesting because there, we have a line from marx through Weber, Max Weber, and we arrived to Zimmel and to Polanyi, which is quite quite uh, coherent in uh, intellectually and very, very, very shared and uh, appreciated in the so-called alternative movement. But Viviana, with in a really, really humble way, without wanting to criticize anyone, with this empirical study about family family interplay about money etc she she showed in 30 years of of activity or, or research that we are much much more powerful than we think and it opens the way to a non-deterministic model and we need it from my point of view when we look at technology like like uh, distributed distributed ledgers 
to r regulate and arrange and, and, and plan our peer-to-peer -peer relationship, we need a non-deterministic view, not an oppositional view. This is good, this is bad, this is alternative, this is traditional. Just, just managing all kind of, of forms, or economic forms, like games, like market, I, market or gift, unconditional gift, reciprocity, whatever. Just don't be attached to anyone, <laughs> good or bad. Sorry for sorry for that, but this, this was it was an opportunity to share. Thank you. Absolutely. Can you also share your name because it doesn't say uh, here? And also, is, my name is not H. No, my name is Vincenzo Giorgino. I'm Italian from Turin, University of Turin, but I don't know why. I don't know how to put my name. <laughs> I'm not able. If you click is the three it, dots at the bottom right, then a small window opens up and the, well, the, the yeah, top please. point, it so, should say me or something like that. If you click that, you can change your name. Are you from Torino? Yes, I am from Torino. <laughs> let, me, let me post your profile in the chat so others can look you up, okay, for you? Okay. Sorry. You can say again where is the place? So, Repeat, you repeat the, 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 your, your instructions, yes. your suggestions. Uh, there is a button where on down. It's on the lower on the lower right hand. There's three dots, and if you click the settings, then you can set your name. And anybody here could do that. Anybody who doesn't have their name set up. And um, for example, Michelle, if you're here, <laughs> another try. <laughs> but, uh, if you have um. I mean, I'm really glad you took the opportunity. I mean, I wasn't obviously was not planning on giving this as a lecture, so I'm really glad to hear that other framework. Do you have a slide with that framework that we could look at? Because that's that's exciting, right? Like developing these ideas together. Or maybe someone else here has another framework they want to present. Hi, hi guys. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. yes. Hello, I'm just switching on my video. I'm Thomas. I'm in Munich, Germany. And uh, I, I wanted to, to pose a question to, to all of you, basically, going back to the title of the session and what my expectation was, which is so, so uh, cosmo-localism. And I believe, especially in the crypto community and some alternative internet communities, there are many people have a strong feelings about localism. And now in the, in the context of Corona, we see guys like Nassim Taleb, I, I assume many of you are aware, about they, they make the case that well local responses to this stressor are the, are the best and we need to we need to distribute right create real world distributed systems and one question or, or one observation that i've made um I, I i think a while ago i wrote some some articles along those lines is that when we talked about local or decentralized systems like say city states there, there used to be one big counter argument in the past which has to do a lot with information and information flows so so one interpretation of how how independent city states formed bigger nation states had a lot to do with with how information could could flow how decisions could be made how how systems could be steered essentially and that there was then economies of scale and all this but today and that is my 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 theory or the thing I've been thinking about a lot is, okay, today we have high connectivity, we have networks, thanks to mostly the, inf the internet information networks. And I once wrote a piece, I called it the small big dualism of networked uh, but decentralized systems. So where a lot of the economies of scale effects you can generate in, in decentralized systems today because of how in information flows. For, for instance, take an example that is not, yeah, in some reading is de decentralized, take Uber, right? You have all these independent driver entities and you create one, one in this case, entity, but it could also be a, a decentralized platform, for instance, right? That, that aggregates all the, the single entities within the system, coordinates them, matches them with people who require a right. And you have this, this decentralized system with one centralized actor, but it could also be something, something else. So, and this going back to society and localism, what could this mean for, for organizing society? 
this I think it's like cosmo localism has to do with this I would assume Michelle sadly isn't here but about how we can be members of the of the world citizens of the of the earth at the one time but also very have having a lot of power delegated to local entities so I it's hard to specify the question, but, but, but maybe the first question, question is, does it make sense to you that in the network capability of information flow, there is some, some way to change governance and empower more local units and groups in systems? To, yeah, I mean, to me, it's also a question of an appropriateness, right? One of the things that we've done is an arbitrariness of where we say borders are, right? Like we have this thing, like there's a border and here's the line and then you people are, those are them and this is us. And that is quite arbitrary, right? Where, whereas you're saying when you're part of a community, you can maybe choose that or maybe that has to do with your geolocation. And I've thought about this also in the context of rivers is the most obvious one. A river runs through several places often where we think, or we've written, we've put down something we call a border, and we said those people are, you know, whatever, the Danube, right? Who does that belong to? And you could actually create membranes of governance that would represent that. It would represent different geographies. And if you're within 100 kilometers of the river, then you're part of that community for the purposes of governing that thing only. So I think that relates both to, you know, what um, was said at the beginning about I'm not sure what community I belong to and that moves depending on what decision is being made right if there's a decision that needs to be made by a society about a river it's different than a decision that needs to be made by the society about education and it's different about transportation and you might be part of a membrane that's different membranes at different times and I think that Sure. Yeah. And, and and sorry for interrupting, but I think what sure. we observe in the last 20 years, thanks to the internet, geography and locality was super important for for your the, the communities you belong to just because of possibility. And today it, it's less and less important because probably, yeah, none of us is low, geographically in the same area, but still we are probably part of one community. And the internet makes it even identity peer peer groups they move digital and that changes things and governance or, or that doesn't have to be political governance in the first place but just how, how groups uh, uh, interact how groups are then governing themselves changes because of this and i think you are at holder chain you are working in the realm of de developing yeah, new governance models for these times no it's, it's more like infrastructure so you, people could be doing governance. You but don't yeah, need to ahead. raise your, your hands right now. I've seen a lot of raised hands in the last minute. Please, this is a different discussion. Uh, yeah, just would like to note that I think uh, thinking globally is good, but I think we're, unfortunately, we're going to see a real uh, return of the nation state at this point. So from talking to people who work, you know, in the UN and stuff like that, the Security Council is essentially not functioning. The EU is basically has closed all its internal borders and so forth. So all the traditional ways that we could think of working uh, together as a global society are under stress. And we also see now we have Hungary. We have essentially a dictatorship in the EU. In, uh, in, in, in the Philippines, they're talking about shooting people on the street. So unfortunately, you're going to have in the next six months a, a real period of, of, of social stress in which I don't think people are able are going to be able to think globally, or at least, let's put it this way, the nation state is back with vengeance, and this kind of beggar your neighbor behavior is, I think, unfortunately, what people are going to rally to. I, Unfortunately, not too helpful, hopeful, that us who want a different way of doing things can are actually going to have any any say in what's going on. Uh, so. I, uh, so this idea of like uh, uh, retreating to the local, to the people that we know and, and defending what we have is, I think, the best best way we can go. Uh, I guess the only way the, to, I don't know. The, so in New York, uh, people are starting, the hospital workers are starting to organize uh, to talk about actually taking over the administration of the hospitals. 
because the, the federal government is kind of failing to coordinate this kind of stuff. So that goes back to the old models of sort of like, you know, the, the Soviets and stuff like that in, in the Russian Revolution and so forth. So the local local workers councils and stuff like that, which is unfortunately pretty discredited throughout most of the West. So um, anyways, so I, I guess the intelligent comment I make here is that I don't know if we have enough time to actually build these global structures about the stress that is about to come through our societies. I would like to add something to this, is Stefan here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. So what my, one of my associations when it comes to, to governance, um, it's it's often about representation, right? And representation of interests. And I think one very interesting experiment coming from the technology side um, with this is liquid democracy. And I'm actually very sure that Michel has also thought and, and worked with this a lot. Um, and I think it's, it's worthwhile to look at how the past experiments with liquid democracy were going and, and what uh, made them fail or um, how successful were they. And I'm, I'm mostly thinking about the Pirate Party in, in Germany, um, which famously tried out liquid democracy. And I, th I think it's, a, it's, from a technology perspective, one of the more interesting experiments to look at where you have a very dynamic or, or fluid um, system to represent interests from an individual level um, up to an, an organizational level. So just my first association to what was discussed here. Can I add something? Please. Uh, yes, maybe what what Thomas maybe Thomas said before is true. We will not be able at community level to to face to the stressing situation that we will have when the the, the COVID nineteen will be over. But uh, still, I cultivate at least for the next days, if not weeks, the idea that we should work for a uh, model oriented to self-organization and start it from our close friends, colleagues, uh, students, or in the community, in the more than one community we are we are member. Um, this is the only the only solution, possible solution, because I, I look at the word as a flat word. They're not hierarchies or states or nation. I just see everything as changeable and what is big today like Amazon or Uber cannot be still alive in five years, in five years. So uh, be flexible and start from little things and from basic needs. What, what mean co Cosmo is so big. I prefer to say what I need today. I need security be safe from the virus i need not to be uh, not not the kind of a surveillance that they had in china and then i reflect with my colleagues or friends yes but they you don't you cannot have both you cannot have the the extreme positive apparent results in terms of life saving that had in, in china if you don't control people from the top and so this is, for, for example, one of the big problems of these days. Are we able to uh, do some contract tracing, some protection from the virus, for example, uh, without that kind of surveillance? Because this will have, after this period, they will like what they have done in this day. They will have some popular support and they will continue to, to control with sensors also or temperature <laughs> where we go. So this is really, don't look at nation and, uh, and participation and the representation. I am beyond that. I think what I can do now and internet is gives to us the possibility of changing values, changing resources, not internet of values in this sense and the, like, the blockchain and just to transfer assets to other people that we don't know 
and give us give, give to us the possibility of trusting other people if they are strangers not belonging to our community and this is the big thing of these days and probably of this conference as well how can we have a, a cosmo cos a, a planetary level um that can reproduce in in better in a better a better level our community and trusting relationship because we have life L life now we, we don't talk about but money or or, or mortgage we, we are we are talking about life 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 itself sorry i don't have an answer it's much, much more a question <laughs> It's interesting because you're pointing at opposite trends, right? So you're pointing at, you know, that we're going to have this, you know, international thing. And uh, I don't know your name, EC, it says on your label. I was talking about, yeah. Uh, Mark, 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 sorry. Mark. Mark is talking about the growth of nation state. And I think we're seeing that at the same time. I mean, we're seeing this really... Um, you think over the last, you know, maybe decade, maybe a little bit less, we've seen the huge counterinsurgence of independence and independent media and sort of anti, um, anti, uh, you know, big, I'm going to say big industry, big government. And I think what we're seeing now is a great excuse for government to come back, right? We were talking about totalitarianism in Hungary. We're seeing fascism on the rise everywhere. And right now we're all sort of, it was interesting, I went into town today, I'm in Slovenia, and it's a very quiet place in the former Yugoslavia. Um, and I can see by the number of people on the street and the number of people this, this week, our government said you need to wear a mask in the supermarket and gloves in the supermarket. So that's control of the food supply. And there are more people at the central market this week than last week. And you can kind of see them like kind of putting on a mask or a scarf, like, but, by, if you know the culture here, you know that's as much as the government will be able to do. You can see people are like, that's it. Like, we're not going to let the government go further. And people are quite on edge. And this is a very peaceful nation. But um, I think that we're going to see an actual, you know, physical struggles in many places between this crackdown of government and this closing of borders and people's desire for freedom. Um, and I think that I agree that we don't quite have time to build these systems, but we're going to have to build them while we're running because this is actually an ongoing battle or war. The war has been going on for maybe five, at least 10 years, but we're in the middle of a very heated battle right now. And we're going to see it unfold very differently, I think, in different places. Um, as you can tell, I'm not Slovenian, but I'm not here by accident. I mean, I've seen this unfolding and I wanted to be somewhere, you know, we've got a standing army of 6,000 people. I'm like, not worried right now, but if you're in the United States or somewhere with a large military, it's the battle may be very interesting. But like you said, the, the hospital workers are starting to take over. So you're seeing like the, you know, two opposite trends simultaneously. Well, and I, I do, I do want to be hopeful. Um, so, may, may, and 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 work for solutions rather than gloom and doom. Uh, so, to go back to your dashboard question, <laughs> I've had a little time to kind of think about it. Um, I think so. To me, a dashboard is like here is a condensation of everything you need to know, and here's a signal. Uh, and this implies that there's an authority that you trust, right, for looking at at that signal. I think the systems we need to build are systems in which individuals can know how how that signal is 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 is, is being gathered and uh, be able to change that so I would like to see dashboards that that allowed one to inspect how the signals were and in easy way how people to kind of organize their own signals that would be a good you know uh, not have a priesthood of computer programmers right but actually make tools that that individuals can uh, and communities can use to, to to assemble their own stuff and again, I think this interstate space chat that's been put together by the local uh, parallel polis here, Kai and so forth in Vienna is, is kind of a, and made open source on GitHub, uh, is, is a good tendency, uh, is, is a good example of that. 
although they will say it's a mess behind the curtains, but at least they have <laughs> made their mess public. So you can see it and inspect it. So yeah, it would be fairly easy or not, you know, to, to take this interface that we have here. Uh, and actually, if you wanted to have like voting mechanisms, to put it in there. I don't hear anything. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you and your kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would like to see a, a dashboard that was, uh, I, I, if it's going to be this localization and this this relationship of, of, of what we have local, and local is not just physically local, it's also local to a community spread in a virtual sense. It's going to be important not important to have it inspectable about how this the signals are, are given in the dashboard and changeable by someone other than a programmer so that individuals can actually bring this stuff in. Those are the that, things I'd like to see in the dashboard. That too can be difficult or dangerous though, because as soon as you allow people to modify and change the way these signals are accumulated or, or, um, or put together and then reduced in dimensionality to whatever dashboard number you get to see, it can also be a false sense of security because then you don't trust the others. You trust yourself, you saw it, there's transparency over the signal and you put it together yourself. And if you have no idea how the model behind it works or or how to math, if you don't have a math person you can trust, if you don't have that person you can trust, it's a, it's just a false sense of security of putting it together and then relying on it. I, I concede, I concede to that. So then I guess go back to reputation and like I said, a lot of conversations. That's my first rule. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, mean you could make the case that one of, one of the big advantages of local local actions and local power is that you don't need to rely on data in the aggregate and complex models to make decisions because it's much easier to to uh, actually talk to your peers and there is all these errors in in models used for decisions that we today uh, some people understand in some context but in the, it's hard you can there is no per such thing as a perfect model and therefore uh, the big advantage of decision making at larger uh, at smaller scales is just that you can have you can manage the ambiguity and the complexity easier than at large scales. Yeah, that actually brings it back to the first topic of agent centricity and data integrity. One of the things that we have in centralized database systems, and I don't want to get too geeky here, but is that you can put data in a table that isn't connected to the author of the data. But when you create agent-centric systems, the databases, every piece of data can only have integrity when you know who authored it. So I'm saying something, you, you couldn't store what I said without the me. That's part of the header of every single item of data. And I think that um, that's what you're speaking about, Mark, is how do we have forms of data integrity that don't allow people to separate the data from where the data came from. This data is from the Chinese government. And then underneath that, it's from this hospital and from this doctor. And both the doctor and the patient validated that that really happened and you could drop, dive deep down. And I think that with data integrity models that are agent centric, we can create this kind of new warm data or whatever you want to call that. So, um, that's kind of like brings it all the way back to the beginning, which is perfect because then we have time for the 10 minute break that we're supposed to have before the next session. Well done.